and get by him. Well, Bush is around. Can he save it this time? Oh, there you go. He does. He saves it. But there's a Jeff, Jeff, car Jeff Gordon's the upside down. Jeff Gordon's upside down. And Kurt Busch's car is destroyed. Oh, my gosh. Jimmy Johnson's car destroyed. Track crew quickly on the scene to aid Jeff Gordon. On the radio, he has told his team he is okay. Yeah, I see him. I think I can see him moving. A wild ride for Jeff Gordon as he tries to win the Bud Shootout, just a lap and a half from the flag. Teammate Jimmy Johnson's car damaged. Several cars to the garage already. Kyle Busch to pit road. Montoya's made a stop and comes back out. It's been like a demolition derby tonight. Holy cow. Tony Stewart and shootout rookie Marcus Ambrose ahead of Clint Boyer, Brad Keselowski, and Greg Biffle. Uh, Jeff Gordon has asked for them to roll the car over before he tries to climb out. Michael can uh, address that situation. Michael, you were upside down here a few years ago over on the back straightaway. Yeah, and, and Michael's a lot bigger than Jeff, and the cars were a lot littler, and uh, that was a bad combination. I could not get out, and you're talking about freaking you out. Be upside down in a car, it's smoking. You see oil or fuel, something dripping around you. You want out really badly, and uh, Jeff's doing his best to explain that to those guys, probably about like I was explaining it with the... Uh, not the calmest manner. No, but you know what, Michael? They, after your deal down here, they came up with a system to turn that car back over. You see them put no straps around the car. When they turned you over, they just pretty much hooked the record to you and slung you back on your wheels. And Looked Jeff like Gordon Jeff climbed out the yes. side there. I think he got out. So uh, that's, the, that's what I love about these big cars, Daryl. There's more room for those guys to get in and out, and that's a, that, that's a lot safer. Jeff Gordon gets a round of applause from the crowd here. And he is okay. Let's see what happened. I, th I think it, it, it's, it's really Jeff trying to get the 18 car Kyle Busch up out of the way. Pushing on that left side again. Yeah, he's just working on him, Michael. He, Kurt, uh, Kyle was blocking and Jeff was trying to get him loose and get him up out of the way and he just uh, got on the left side and spun him out. Look at the job Ambrose and Boyer did coming through there and there's our buddy old Brad Keselowski. We ain't seen him up front all night. He's fixing to restart with a chance to win this baby. <laughs> yeah, I asked Jerry, Larry, I said, is Brad Keselowski in this race? Well, yeah. Jeff Gordon's car went about a thousand feet on the driver's door before it barrel rolled to a stop. Yeah. Yeah, Brad Keselowski in that too. He's in that backup car. You see Jeff down there. He just gets down on his left corner, and we've seen that time and time and time again. You got to stay off the left side. What do we do about that, though, man? How do we fix it? The drivers just have to make the decision that they've got to lay off that left side. Look at this long slide for Gordon, and that's Kurt Busch tangled up with him and Jimmy Johnson, and that car still hasn't uh, lost much of its momentum as it goes side over side and comes to rest Michael on its roof. A really good point though, Mike. These cars are so much bigger than the cars were five years ago. With the safety innovations that NASCAR has built into these cars, the drivers moved over to the center of the car six inches further than ever before. The roll cage is bigger. That's a, that really helped Jeff Gordon in that situation. Dick Bergman. Jimmy Johnson is sitting in his car, and it is his opinion that the mechanic should fix this car so he can go back out. The right front is absolutely torn off the car. There's oil on it. There is a lot of work going on here, but there are so few cars left in running condition. Johnson wants to continue the race. Well, we have completed 75 laps, Dick, but this race is not over because of NASCAR's green-white checker rule. We'll have several attempts. Mike, get it finished. Sorry, but there's that device they uh, created to turn it when a car gets upside down. That buoy and all that stuff they hook to it now to turn it over gently. Here's our Fox Super Zoom as Jeff Gordon makes contact with the left rear corner of Kyle Busch's bumper. 
And by the way, Bush did, again did a great job of saving that car from major damage. But look what happens in front of him. What truly caused that was when Jeff Gordon got into Kyle Busch, Jeff Gordon moved up the racetrack, and there was just nowhere for most of these drivers to go. Roof flaps deployed as the car was up, up on its side. And look at uh, Kurt Busch's car shed momentum and sheet metal everywhere. See another driver that we felt like had one of the fastest cars here tonight involved in that, Jamie McMurray in that one car. Yes, sir. Denny Hamlin snuck through another one. So did Montoya. It's a rough ride right there. Wow. Thank God for the Hans device, the seats, the way you're bolted in these things today. Uh, he's able to handle something like that and walk away. Jeff was just really working hard on, on the back of that 18 car, trying to move him up the hill so he could get by. And the type of bump drafting you used to be able to do at Daytona yep. is problematic tonight for big crashes. I feel so bad for Kurt Busch, second car of the weekend. There are the cars involved in the wreck. And we heard Richard Childress talking about what might lead up to something like this. Whole damn deal, as long as they let them push in the corners, they're going to wreck. It's going to cost everybody a ton of money. He owns four cars entered in the Daytona 500 and said that before this latest crash. I think I'm correct. I heard this today, and Larry, you may know for a fact, but in an ARCA race, they would not, they said no pushing. No, you can't get by, up on anybody in the corners. In the corners. In the ARCA race. Now, those cars have a different aerodynamic package than these Sprint Cup cars, but. Hey. Michael, what about it getting up against somebody in the corner, whether it's the right side, the left side, or anywhere? Well, what you got to think about, Mike, is we used to be able to push every, all the way around this racetrack. NASCAR, the fans didn't like it. NASCAR didn't like it, so they changed it. Back in the day, 01, 03, along in there when we raced here at Daytona, you didn't dare push someone in the corner because of the crash. You knew you would spin someone out if you tried it. And now we're in the same situation again. The drivers are learning tonight. They're seeing that you can't push on that left side. Now, there's going to be circumstances. Circumstances. A great example was Truex and, and Boyer in the trioval. Truex or Boyer moved over. Truex was left on the left. That spun him around. But with Jeff Gordon, he was hitting on that left side of Kurt Kyle Busch all the way through the turn. Eventually, it spun him out. So the drivers are going to have to watch the video and say, "All right, we might need to calm down a little bit here and not tear up all that equipment that Richard Childress is talking about." Well, let's take another couple of looks here from ground level. And Jeff Gordon, after sliding 800 feet on the driver's door, up and over and dissipating energy. And here's what Kurt Busch had to say after the smoke settled down. Really appreciate you guys working as hard as you did to give me the fun to come out here and race. I hope it was fun for you guys. I thought we could have got clear of that. Dan Gordon just wrecked the 18. That's what's happening is the rear spoilers are so small, you can choose to wreck somebody. Lots of uh, Kurt Busch. Jeff? Down here with Kurt Busch. And, and Kurt, uh, first off, you okay? But you you were so complimentary to your crew. You got out, you hugged these guys, but you got a tore up race car here. <laughs> you know, we had a blast tonight. And you could feel the energy, the excitement, and the butterflies with 10 to go because we were in position. I mean, with two to go, we were right in the mix with the big dogs. And we're just a little team. Uh, you know, I'm going to stop saying that. We worked really hard to get this car. This was the backup to the backup. And we were, we were just... You could get that, that butterflies in the stomach feel to know we were in position to do good things with our Tag Heuer Chevrolet. I just want to thank Tag Heuer for jumping on board tonight. I'm, I just, I had fun out there. I mean, what got me was, again, you said it, no laps on this race car, but this team was able to not only get you up front, but you led the race, you were in that position. You know, how much of a, a a boost to your ego right now and your confidence right now going into the 500. Well, we know James Finch and Phoenix Racing builds great speedway cars. And so to have this Chevrolet with Hendrick Power and Tag Heuer tonight, it was just a, a huge 
boost for this whole club. And now it's just a matter of, you know, just throwing this car away because they said, all the guys were joking, this is a 1985 Buick. Go out there, bring it back on the rollback. So that's not the mentality, though, for the rest of the year. We need to protect our race cars and have fun. But now it's off to Hendrick.com Chevrolet tomorrow to get that car qualified in the Daytona 500. A lot of energy down here, guys. Thanks a lot. Kurt Busch having a very competitive night, but ending up with two trashed race cars, one in practice and one in the race. And boy, it's a, it's a junkyard down there in the garage area. But you know what, Mike? Uh, team mate, crew members will work themselves to death to give you a good car when you put on a show like Kurt did. When they know they're getting a result for their hard work, they will stand by you all the way to the bitter end. Up to three attempts at a green-white checker. It's what we're facing here in Daytona to conclude the Budweiser shootout. A.J. Allmendinger's car after a long pit stop getting back out on track with some crash damage. Jimmy Johnson OK. Looks like he, he has climbed from the car that he wanted fixed to get back out there and try it again.